Jesus is God with us. This is what Matthew tells us. God is with us in Jesus. And this is Matthew in 5. The Gospel of Matthew concentrates on God with us in Jesus. The end of chapter 1 introduces us to Jesus as Emmanuel, which means God with us. And the end of chapter 28 concludes with Jesus' words, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. From the beginning to the end of Matthew, God is with us, and Jesus is God. And this Gospel is shocking because the first thing we learn about God with us is that God is with us in a person. Chapters 1 through 4 tell us about him. He has a genealogy. He has parents. He's born of the Virgin Mary. He has Joseph as his earthly father. The Magi visit him. He has to flee. He's in danger. He grows up. He's tempted. And through all of this, we see that he is also the one prophesied about in the Old Testament. This person is Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, the son of the living God. Matthew actually goes to great pains in order to demonstrate that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies about the Messiah. In the first four chapters alone, there are seven separate references to Old Testament prophecies that are fulfilled in Christ. God has kept his promises. God is with us. He is Jesus. In chapters 4 through 15, Jesus begins to show us what God with us looks like. The kingdom of heaven, which is Jesus' phrase for God with us, doesn't look like what you would expect. He presents the kingdom through his teaching. Consider the Sermon on the Mount in chapters 5, 6, and 7. And consider his parables, especially his kingdom parables in chapter 13. And in all of this, he teaches with the authority of God with us. But he also shows us what the kingdom looks like through healing the blind and feeding the 5,000, casting out demons, walking on water, and even raising the dead. And he does all of this through the power of God with us. And he also forgives sins as only God with us can. The pivot point in the Gospel of Matthew comes in chapter 16, when Peter confesses that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And here we see that Jesus is going to do something in order to bring about the kingdom of heaven. It's not just a future reality like he talks about in chapters 24 and 25. It's also a present reality that he's going to bring about through his death and resurrection. And so he immediately tells Peter and his disciples that in order to accomplish his mission as the Messiah, the Christ, in order to bring about the kingdom of heaven as the Son of God, he is going to suffer and die and rise. However, this means that when God reigns, it's not all good news. There's also law. There's going to be a judgment when Jesus comes again one last time, his second coming. Sin will be punished. Sinners will be cast out of the kingdom to suffer eternally. When God is with us, when Jesus reigns in the kingdom of heaven, if we trust in Jesus as God with us, then we receive all the benefits of his kingdom. But if we reject Jesus as God with us, then we receive all the curses of being outside of that kingdom. The final three chapters of Matthew are Jesus' death, resurrection, and final words. Having taught with the authority of God with us, having healed with the power of God with us, having forgiven sins as only God with us can do, and having taught that God with us will suffer and die in order to bring about the kingdom of heaven, Jesus finally arrives in Jerusalem to face his passion. But before he does that, he has one last meal with his disciples. Here he institutes the Lord's Supper. He gives this one last gift of himself, God with us, to his church for the forgiveness of sins until he comes again. And in chapter 27, we see how God with us suffers and dies in order to reconcile this creation and all sinners to God and to reign as king in the kingdom of heaven. It's with great irony that God with us, the one who is God with us, says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But because he was forsaken, we who now live in the kingdom of heaven will never be forsaken, but will live forever with God in Christ. Chapter 28 concludes the Gospel of Matthew with Jesus' resurrection and final words. And with his final words, Jesus institutes the church through his word and sacraments. In baptism, God's name is placed on us. God with us. In the words of Jesus' teaching, God is with us. The church is God's kingdom of heaven on earth. God with us through his word and sacraments. God in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in his church. 
And, my dear friends, Matthew is good news because God is with us now. He is the one the Old Testament promise in whom all of God's promises are kept. And he is your savior as well. Your sins are forgiven and you have hope of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Believe this and have salvation in his name. Believe this and live in the kingdom of heaven now and to the end of the age. Jesus Christ, God with us. That's Matthew in 5. Read it, learn it, and pass it on.